Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sarchi and this is a Pathfinder solution series and as promised in the previous problem from the series uh, I'm going to bring forward to you the problem from the topic of thermodynamics in the Pathfinder textbook in the section challenge your understanding and it is I think the fourth uh, problem so for those who have been following the series uh, this was presented to you in the previous problem and I asked you to work it out for one or two days and I said I would be providing you with the solution. It's a very interesting problem and a tough problem by JE standards because in JE physics we would be usually dealing with reversible processes and we would be given certain formulae in those processes which would easily help us solve problems but in irreversible process uh, the formulae that work in reversible processes won't be useful so um, instead of mugging up the formulae that's why I try to suggest students uh, to ensure that they have their concept uh, very solid okay so let's move ahead for the formal wording of the question so in case you are watching this for the first time either the channel or the problem so please make sure you pause the video if you are interested of course and then try to solve this problem for a good amount of 10 to 15 minutes it's not very easy so then um, once your attempt is done whether you get it or not uh, try to see my version of the solution okay so let's try to go ahead with the formal wording of the question an ideal gas is trapped in a vertical cylinder under a piston and the inner surface of the cylinder is lubricated with oil. So this is done to avoid friction. The cylinder is made of material of finite thermal conductivity. So let's underline few things that are very important in this problem as we move along. So I'll recollect all these things. Okay. So finite thermal conductivity. Initially, the piston stays in equilibrium. Uh, at a height of h above the base of the cylinder okay height h and the system is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings very important word right that means same temperature as the surroundings when the small weight is gently placed so this is small weight on the piston the piston quickly settles this is very important to a new equilibrium position delta h1 distance below its initial position after a long time that means there is a second process happening the piston further moves down by another distance of delta H2, which is even more smaller than uh, delta H1 by a ratio of 0.4. <clears throat> if the displacements delta H1 and delta H2 are both negligibly small, why is this small? Because the weight is very small. As compared to the initial height of the piston, very important information, find the molar specific heat at constant volume of the gas and predict the atomicity of the gas. Okay, so this is the question. So I still want to give it a try, pause, do it and then come back here i am with the solution of the problem okay so what we'll do is we'll try to solve there are two processes in the problem page by page okay so the first page i am going to present to you right now would be about the first process where the piston moves by height of delta h1 which was given as quick process okay so again don't worry i'll take you step by step so don't read the entire thing just follow my cue here okay you could see that i have drawn a very crude diagram of a um, cylinder with a piston initially so i represents the initial position f represents the final position in the first process okay right so when the block of mass m is placed then the piston quickly it seems settles to this new position by moving a delta h1 height is given p0 is the atmospheric pressure i have considered and p1 is the gas pressure okay right the, as mass given is very small, delta H1 is considered to be very small compared to the value of total height, which means gas did not appreciably change its state. Okay, so the pressure of the gas doesn't change appreciably because if you want to test yourself, so in equilibrium condition of the piston when it comes to this position, okay, equilibrium uh, condition is this, then you'll write the upward force on the piston should be equal to the downward forces acting on the piston which are atmospheric force and the weight of the entire object okay so piston plus object so if you carefully observe the final pressure let's say is given by p1 initially if you write this equation there won't be any small m that's it rest of the things would be same so removing a small m from this on right hand side doesn't change this value of p1 by much so my argument that the pressure of the gas doesn't change appreciably uh, because the pro process is uh, quick, it will be a irreversible one is a uh, very uh, 
I think nice assumption to take. Okay, right. So it is a very quick process and the pressure would be not changing. So this is an irreversible adiabatic process. Okay, why is it adiabatic? Let's go to the next step. With the walls given finitely conducting, he said it is finitely conducting. What is meant by finitely conducting walls? They will take some time, right, in order to conduct heat from outside to inside. That conducting ability is finite and not infinite. If it was infinite, then always the temperature inside the gas would be temperature outside. Okay, right. So it takes time to conduct, which means there won't be enough time for the heat flow. The, there won't be enough time for the heat flow to happen. Okay, so the heat never got time to flow into this. Okay, because of the motion of this particular piston only, things should change. Internal energy should change inside, but not due to the flow of heat from outside. So work is done on the gas, but there is no heat flow from outside. So it makes it an adiabatic but irreversible process and very important with gas almost at constant pressure. Okay, so it has same pressure, right? Initial and finally in between the states are not defined. Please understand in an irreversible process, only the initial state and final state are defined. Okay, so you cannot use your isobaric processes formulae from reversible conditions. Okay, this is adiabatic irreversible initial pressure equal to final pressure. I don't know about the in between pressures. Okay, right. I can use first law of thermodynamics that we use in physics. Q heat supplied. I said it is zero. Delta U, which is a state change, it doesn't matter what kind of process is underwent. Delta U is also always NCV delta T. I think by now you know CV is FR by two minus. Uh, so the work done by gas. How do you calculate work done by gas is because of the force that it is applying on the piston multiplied by the displacement. Actually, this force is constant. So I can write that these two product, which is negative, obviously, because force is upward displacement is downward. Uh, this would be minus P1 into A delta H1. So I brought this term here. P1 A delta H1 from the first process, I arrived at a conclusion is equal to NCV into delta T1. I I will keep this one and I'll go to the second process now. I'll use this in the further solution. Okay, right. So let's move ahead. Second process is a more familiar process. Uh, it says in the problem that after reaching that delta H1 position, you leave it on its own slowly because now heat transfer will take place. You are giving it time to have a heat transfer, then the piston will continue to move very slowly to a new equilibrium position. And this new equilibrium position would be a complete thermodynamic equilibrium where pressure of the gas and outside pressure and uh, sorry, temperature of the gas and outside temperature would be the same, right? So that is the condition. Okay, so temperature, I said pressure, sorry, it should be the temperature inside should be equal to temperature outside because you're giving enough time for the heat to flow this time. Okay, it's a reversible process and I can define the states in between also. Okay, given as a slow process, there will be sufficient time for heat flow as friction is uh, as the Piston is frictionless. Slow process means P1 remains constant. It's obvious, right? If you if you draw the FBD of this at every instant during this, net force on this should be zero. Then only it should be a slow process, which means whatever equation you wrote in the previous section that this force equation is valid throughout the process now. Okay, so pressure remains constant. This time pressure remains constant. Heat is allowed to flow and it is reversible process because it's a slow process. So this time we have a reversible isobaric process. Okay, right. All right. I can call it isobaric only if the pressure throughout is same. Last time pressure was same only initially and finally their heat flow didn't happen. Okay, so some of you might be getting doubt that last time I didn't call it isobaric because I don't know the states in between in a irreversible process. Here I am very confident. Okay, so Q is equal to delta U plus W again. This time I can use my old formula NCP delta T delta T2 NCV delta T2 and W is equal to uh, the value of pressure into uh, the pressure force into work the same way that we have written in the previous case. So you take it this side CP minus CV. This is R P P1. P1 is still the same. You could see that, right? The pressure has not become P2. So P1 into A into delta H2 would be equal to minus NR into delta T. T2. Actually, you could have written this directly because this is nothing but the derivation of CP minus CV equal to R. So there is an alternate way. Look on the right side of the screen. You could have just written P1 equal to P1V equal to NRT. Take delta on both sides. 
take delta on both sides change then p1 doesn't change delta v is a into delta h2 area into delta h2 and you would have written nr into delta t2 this would have been a more obvious way of writing it but i wanted to show that this is a more familiar reversible process that's why i just showed off with cps and cbs okay which you couldn't do in the previous system okay right so this is my second equation so let's borrow the first one and second one into the third page this is what i got in the first equation Okay, and this is what I got in the second equation. Okay, so you could see there's a plus here, there's a minus here, right? And then initially and finally, the temperature of gas will be the temperature of surroundings. Remember, initially the temperature was, let's say some value, as the quick process happened, temperature would have changed. You might be wondering, heat didn't flow, but temperature changed. Remember, temperature is related to internal energy. Okay, so first process was adiabatic, but temperature will change, and there is an increase in temperature. You could see that's a positive value. Whereas in the second process, the temperature will fall because it's a compressed uh, iso isobaric process. Okay, so since you are giving it long time again, I think finite conductivity will allow the gas to attain thermal equilibrium with outside. So finally, the temperature of the gas would be equal to the temperature of surroundings, which means that some of the changes that happened in the first process, an increase and a decrease in the second process should be equal to zero, which means the ratio of these two is minus one is what I'll use now to eliminate this. So that what I do, I smartly divide the two equations, cancel this delta T1 and delta T2 with this minus sign. I'll nicely have only the ratio of delta H1 and H2, which he gave in the question, and F by two would be coming on the right hand side. So F is simply two times of delta H1 by delta H2, which he gave the ratio as one by 0.4, then I get five. So if degrees of freedom are five, I think he writes in the answer in the textbook as uh, diatomic, but it should be a linear structure. I think you all know a gas of linear structure will have three degrees of translational freedom and two degrees of rotational freedom. So this should be five degrees and therefore the CV value is five R by two. Okay, so this is the solution of, if you are writing it in steps, you would see this is easy, but maintaining composure, throughout the problem, understanding each and every word, how we underlined in the question is the most important part to understand the solution. Okay, so what's the next question that we are going to take up in the next video? This is the one. So we are going to take up a question from the fluid statics, right? So this is 19th question. You can search for the question in the book Pathfinder. And this is what we are going to take up in the Pathfinder solution series. Those who are new, they want to check out the rest of the playlist link of the Pathfinder. There is a description below in that you can find the playlist link. Please do surf through all the videos that have been already put up and you will find them there to be worth your time and I've selected good questions as of now. Okay, and also the other playlist that you could be interested in this channel, uh, IITS Select Series, Olympiad Workout Series and explanation for what is Olympiad Workout Series, their syllabus, books, everything is there inside this and Resolve Series where uh, famous doubts that generally are not resolved in your uh, coaching or in your normal books would be considered here, right? So these are the other playlists whose links can be found even below and please make sure you go through them, okay? Right, like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll be bringing more questions from different sections, either Pathfinder, whether it is AITS or Olympiads and also the original challenges. And uh, I hope you will stay with me for my next video. Thank you and take care.